Hello, this session is all about number bonds to 20. If you know your number bonds to 10 really well, then that will help you to learn your number bonds to 20. So for this session, we are going to need a dry wipe or felt tip pen, five 10 frames, and you can download these from our school website, a part part hole diagram, and this one here I have made by drawing three of them side by side on a piece of paper and putting them in a poly pocket. 20 counters, you could use buttons, coins, but here I have used pebbles, and a pencil and paper, or a whiteboard if you have one. So to begin with, let's recap on number bonds to 10. Now we can show number bonds to 10 in lots of different ways. This first way here is a 10 frame. And we have shown our number bonds by using pennies with red dots on one side and purple dots on the other side. So this 10 frame here has eight pennies with red dots, two with purple dots. So that shows that eight and two make 10. Eight and two are number bonds to 10. Then our next picture is a coat hanger with 10 pegs on and we have arranged the pegs into two groups. So we've got a group of eight pegs and a group of two pegs. And again, that shows that eight and two make 10. Now, another way that we can represent our number bonds is by using a part, part, whole diagram. So to show our 10 frame with our eight red pennies and our two purple pennies, I could show that by putting 10, as my whole number, and then our two parts are eight and two. And finally, I could show this as a number sentence or as a calculation, and our calculation would be eight add two equals 10. Eight and two make 10. And so on to number bonds to 20. And to show our number bonds up to 20, we're going to need two 10 frames here. And for each square on my 10 frame, I'm going to put a pebble. That means I'm going to need 20 pebbles altogether. But you could use counters or buttons if you're doing this yourself. Now, I could show what's going on here by using my part, part, whole diagram. So all together, we have got 20 squares on the two 10 frames, and out of those squares, 20 of them have got pebbles on, and there are no squares which are empty. So that shows that 20 and 0 make 20. 20 and 0 are number bonds to 20. Now let's see what happens if I take a pebble away. So we've no longer got 20 pebbles, we've now got 19 pebbles and we've got one empty square. So now our two 10 frames are showing us that 19 and one make 20. 19 and one are number bonds to 20. Let's take away some more pebbles. Okay, I've taken away four pebbles altogether now. So altogether, we now have 16 squares with pebbles in, and we've got four empty squares. So 16 and 4 make 20. 16 and 4 are number bonds to 20. Now let's just go back to our number bonds to 10 for a moment. And the picture that we've got here is showing a tens frame with six pebbles on. And I'm going to draw a part part whole diagram to show what's going on. So as we have a tens frame, we've got 10 spaces all together. And out of those 10 spaces, six have got pebbles in and we've got one, two, three, four empty spaces. So that tens frame is showing us that six and four make 10. Now knowing our number bonds to 10 can help us to work out our number bonds to 20. So we're going to use the idea of six and four making 10 to see if we can work out number bonds to 20. So at the top here, I've got my six pebbles again on a tens frame and I've added another empty tens frame. So all together, I have 20 spaces. So I'm gonna show this on a part, part whole. There's my 20. Now, at the top, I've got my six pebbles, 
just as before, but I've got more empty spaces. I've got one, two, three, four, just like we had before, but I've also got 10 more empty spaces, 10 more than four, which is 14. So knowing that six and four makes 10 can help me work out that six and 14 make 20. But what happened if instead of adding an empty tens frame, I added the tens frame and put 10 pebbles on there. Now I've still got my 20 spaces, but this time, instead of having six pebbles, I've got 10 more. So I've got 16 and I've got four empty spaces. So I've got 16 with pebbles, four empty spaces. So 16 and four make 20. And knowing that six and four make 10 can help me to work that out. Okay, let's have a look at another one. So we've got another tens frame here and let's show what's going on on this tens frame with a part, part, whole. So we know that we have got 10 spaces all together and out of those 10 spaces, we have five which have got pebbles on and we have got one, two, three, four, five empty spaces. So this tens frame is showing us that five and five make 10. And we can use that fact to help us work out our number bonds to 20. So let's draw a part part hole to show what's going on here. So now we have got 20 spaces and out of those 20 spaces, we have our five pebbles and we have got our one, two, three, four, five empty spaces at the top and another 10 on our new tens frame. So all together, that's 10 and five, that's 15 empty spaces. And knowing that five and five make 10 can help us to work out that five and 15 make 20. Now here's another set of tens frames and this time instead of adding an empty tens frame I've added the tens frame and filled it up with 10 pebbles. So let's look at this one on a part pot hole diagram. So we have got 20 spaces all together and out of those 20 spaces I've got my five on the bottom tens frame which have got pebbles on and 10 more at the top. Five and 10 makes 15. So I've got 15 spaces with pebbles and five empty spaces, which shows that 15 and five make 20. And knowing that five and five make 10 can help us to work out our number bonds to 20. Now, why don't you pause the video here, have a go with your own tens frames at home to see if you can make number bonds to 10 and use them to help you make number bonds to 20. Welcome back. Now that we've investigated using our tens frames, how knowing our number bonds to 10 can help us to work out our number bonds to 20, we're going to move on to showing this using our part, part, hole diagrams. And we're going to use the picture here where we've got three of the part, part holes all side by side. So in the first diagram, I'm going to show one of my number bonds to 10. So I'm going to put 10 at the top, and I'm going to write in my part part hole that seven and three make 10. Seven and three are number bonds to 10. And I'm going to use that fact to help me work out number bonds to 20. Now, knowing that seven and three make 10, it's going to help me to work out that 17 and three make 20. Now there's another number bond to 20 that that fact can help me work out. So knowing that seven and three make 10 can also help me work out that seven and 13 make 20. So in the first diagram here, we added our 10 extra onto the seven to make 17. So 17 and three make 20. And in the next one, we added our 10 onto the three. So seven and 13 make 20. Now, why don't you pause the video here, use your own part, part, whole diagrams to show how knowing number bonds to 10 can help you to work out the two number bonds to 20. Welcome back. 
Now we're going back to using the tens frames for a moment, and we're going to use the tens frames to see if it can help us to use a systematic approach to working out all of the number bonds to 20. So in my first picture here, I've got 20 pebbles and I've got no spare spaces on my tens frames. So that is showing that 20 add zero makes 20. 20 and zero are number bonds of 20. If I take one pebble away, I've now got 19 pebbles and one empty space. So that shows that 19 add one make 20. Let's take away another pebble. I've now got 18 pebbles and two empty spaces. So that's shown that 18 add two makes 20. 18 add two are number bonds to 20. If I take another pebble away, I've now got 17 pebbles and three empty spaces. 17 add three equals 20. And by taking one pebble away each time, I'm using a very systematic approach to make sure that I can get all of the number bonds up to 20. Now, why don't you pause the video here for a second and see if you can work out all of the other number bonds to 20. Welcome back. So here we go. Those are all the number bonds that we could work out. And you might think we could go on and do 9 at 11 and 8 at 12, but those are just repetitions of ones that we've already got. Because here we've got 9 and 11, but just the other way around. And here we have got 8 and 12, but we've got it as 12 and 8. So those are all the number bonds to 20 that we need to learn. So that was number bonds to 20. And don't forget, knowing your number bonds to 10 can really help you to learn your number bonds to 20. And just like your number bonds to 10, it's important that you try and learn your number bonds to 20 inside out. So practice them forwards, backwards, so you know them really, really well. Goodbye.